Hey guys and welcome back to a new Jetpack Compose video. In this video I will compare the old basic text field with the new basic text field 2 because that is exactly what we get now in the later Jetpack Compose versions. So previously if you were building custom text fields in Jetpack Compose you used the basic text field composable. So all that really is in this most basic form is just a transparent composable that allows you to enter text. But as you can already see, we also now have a basic text field too, which is very new. And in this video, I will go over all the changes this basic text field too has over the old version and why you should start using it. If you don't have this yet, then you need to make sure that you are using the latest Jetpack Compose version. You can do this in your built at Gradle app file and making sure that you are using at least this version here for the bill of materials. If you have that, synchronize and then you can follow along if you want. And to get started, I just want to define two very basic text states as we know it already. So var text one by remember, and in here we define an empty string. Alt enter to import that set value. And then we can just copy paste this to also have a text two for our new text field. Whoops, not that one, like this. Then we can go ahead here and define basic text field without two. So just the normal basic text field that takes in a value. And this value in this case will just be our first text. So text one, and we have an on value change where we update our text one with the new text. So this on value change is just called whenever we type something into this text field, that's probably nothing new to you. Let's also style these text fields a little bit so we can see where these are with a shared modifier of, let's say, fill max width give it some padding of 16 dp alt enter to import that and let's also say we have a background of light gray if we then assign this modifier here like this and we then go ahead and define the basic text field too this one you can see it pretty much has the same parameters if we go in here define our text two in this case and an on value change. We again say text two in this case is equal to it. Let's also pass a modifier. There we go. And the error here is just because we need this experimental notation. So since it's of course in a pretty early stage, we again need this experimental compose API annotation. So if we now launch this, then in and of itself, you can see that we just have two text fields this is the normal uh, text field and this is the basic text field too, which seem to work pretty much the same way. Well, let me tell you, there are actually quite some changes and these changes not only allow us to do more cool things in an easier way with this new text field, but also they help us to avoid critical bugs the old text field variant could potentially have. Because it could happen with this basic text field, so the old version, if you type something and in the background you do some sort of asynchronous operation while typing, and that again updates and synchronizes the text field with some text, maybe from the view model. So let's say you just have a profile screen in your app uh, with a username text field. You can enter a new username to update that. Uh, but at the same time, that username gets updated on a different device and there is some sort of real-time synchronization, then it can happen that, that while you're typing that new username, the, the new saved username will actually update the device. So what I mean is we could, for example, have a launch defect block here just true we just want to launch this once we delay this for five seconds and after that we change our text one to hello world if we do it like this and we launch our app and wait five seconds and we type something uh, for for some reason it doesn't show the text fields here okay now we have uh, let's launch this again you just saw the text hello world but if we type something meanwhile then at some point, this text suddenly gets replaced with hello world, which could come from an asynchronous operation, maybe some kind of real-time stream from an API or so, and everything the user has previously typed will then be erased with this new string. So depending on the asynchronous operation you have in your app, you could either run into race conditions or just have a bad user experience, like in this case, for example. And that's also why in the past it was not recommended to actually keep a text field state in a state flow, because state flows often contain flow operators, they often contain asynchronous uh, behavior, where there is a delay between typing and actually updating the text field state. But if we take a look here and we update this text one to text two, so we update our text of our basic text field two, we relaunch our app, take a look here, and we now type something in our second text field, wait five seconds, 
you will notice that our text field actually doesn't even get updated with the hello world text. And this is usually the desired behavior. And the way this works internally is that this new text field, this basic text field two, keeps a new state to the text field's value internally and only once editing is done. So for example, when the focus is lost for the text field, then it really updates the new um, value of the text field and stores that in a state. And actually, I've been using this basic text field to here wrong all the time. Well, not particularly wrong, but not in the ideal way because this basic text field too, not only comes with this overload with value and on value change, which we already know, but this also comes with the overload that takes in a state, which is a text field state. And that is a new class that this basic text field to introduced. And having this text field state instead is just a much more robust way to implement such text field state and also control it, manipulate it. So now you have much more capabilities and options to actually um, build text fields here. So all we really need to do now is we need to define the state with remember text field state and then pass it here. And that's pretty much all we need at this point. So this rem remember text field state will just create such a text field state. It makes sure to remember it. So it also survives uh, screen rotations and process death. And as you can see, uh, that itself is already enough to be able to type something here to persist the state. Um, but very often we, of course, need to somehow manipulate the state or react to changes. So if we type something here, we hit submit or so, then we need to validate the input of the text field. So it's often not appropriate to define the state like this in your compose code, but rather define the text field state directly in your view model or so. And that's also no issue because you can just create a text field state like this, text field state, of course, not in your compose code without remember, but assuming you would be in a view model here with this line of code, you could just um, put this text field state in a state flow, in a compose state, and then just pass it directly to your basic text field to composable. And you can do exactly the same things with that, just that in this case, you have this text field state property directly in your view model. So why should we now use this text field state over the previous overload where we uh, were able to pass a string and an on value change lambda? Well, because this text field state allows us to do much more cool things with our text field. On the one hand, if we say state dot, you can see uh, we have some more functionality here, but the cool thing, or one of the cool things is that we have this added function that pretty much gives us a string builder on steroids here, which gives us access to this text field buffer because that is also how this um, text field state works internally. It keeps a buffer. It, it remembers what kind of values we actually typed into it. And if we take a look what kind of functionality we have here, you can see we have replace, we have a list of changes. So you can see from the text field buffer, we have a change list. So that is something um, we can actually take a look at what kind of things the user maybe pasted in the text field, um, what, what the ranges in the text field are in, in the terms of indices. And it also allows us to pretty easily implement something like an undo functionality. So if you have a text editor, the user pastes something, hits undo, then with, a ch uh, with this changes list, you can just find out uh, from which starting index to which ending index, the user actually pasted something and you simply remove that piece of text. Now you can also use this to delete a specific range in your text. You can use revert all changes to just yeah re revert all these changes that have been made previously. You can uh, place the cursor at a specific character. You can easily select characters in a specific text range. So there's a lot you can now do to manipulate the text field state. So overall, this new state edit function here makes this new text field state less error prone than the old way of managing it and just gives you an overall better idea of what changed when. Another thing this offers you, um, which is particularly interesting in a view model, is that we have a state.text as flow. So we can get the text changes as a flow. You can see a text field a character sequence, which you can then very easily observe in the view model, combine it with other flows. So whenever the text actually changes, you can then, I don't know, react to changes, map the character to something like, I don't know, the uppercase or so. Um, so you can, you can be very flexible with that. That's pretty much just a wrapper um, or a simple function of the snapshot flow. So with snapshot flow and a state, we can pretty much just get a flow that is triggered whenever a compose state changes. Uh, but I think the state that text as flow looks a little bit cooler than that. So much about the text field state, but that is actually not it yet. The, the basic text field too has more changes, more cool things. On the one hand, we can pass a so-called input transformation, which is new. So if we want to restrict the user of only being able to enter a specific set of characters or only enter something based on a specific pattern, then we can use such an input transformation for that. And to give you an example, 
let's just define something like an Android input transformation, which is an input transformation. And in here, we can override the transform input function. And this gives us access to the original value. So the value of our text field before the user typed something. And this is the value with the changes as a text field buffer. And in this function, we can now decide whether we want to let this value with changes pass and uh, push it to the real buffer, or whether we want to not let this pass. And let's say we want to have a text field where the only word we can actually type is Android. Just as a little example, we could do this with such an input transformation. For example, by going in here and checking if the string Android does not contain our changes, so value with changes as a character sequence. If that is not the case, then we say value with changes dot revert all changes. So we revert all the new changes. So nothing is actually saved in our real buffer after um, running through this input transformation. And yes, we again need this experimental annotation here to get rid of these errors. But if we now run this and then take a look in our second text field, no matter what I enter here, um, actually, we need to apply this transformation, of course. So let's go in here and say input transformation and set that to an Android input transformation and relaunch this. If we now go in here in the second text field, no matter what I type here, it actually doesn't work unless I type exactly Android because it will only let these letters pass. So of course, this is just a non-real world example, but let's say you have some kind of numbers field and you only allow uh, digits between one and four or so, then you can use such an input transformation to only let these digits pass you want to let pass. So that's definitely cool. Another cool change is that the basic text field too now allows us to pass a scroll state. So just like um, a modifier in a column or so, if our text field becomes scrollable, and that was possible before. So if we have a multi-line text field and that has uh, maybe 10 lines, but you only allow to display three of these, then that of course needs to be scrollable. But what wasn't possible uh, previously is that you can also observe that scroll behavior, that you can react to these scroll events. And that now changed. So we can now have our very own scroll state. You can of course keep this in a reference before and then also react to scroll events. And for example, have your very own scroll bar or have a specific slider. And when you uh, slide that, then the basic text field will automatically also scroll. Or you could add a button. And if you click that button, you scroll exactly by one line or whatever you need. Um, if you need that behavior to, con uh, to control the scroll events in the text field, uh, then you can use remember scroll state here together with this basic text field too. And one last thing I consider important that I would like to go over here is another variant of this basic text field too, which isn't actually called basic text field too, but basic secure your text field. So that is also based on text field two. It also takes in a uh, text field state. But as the name says, this is optimized for a secure input. So for passwords, for uh, credit card numbers, because the, the memory management behind this basic secure text field is a bit different than the normal basic text field two, so that it really only keeps these passwords and credit card information in memory as long as really necessary, but not longer. And overall, there are a few more little changes, but I think I went over the most important ones and you now get a good grasp of why this uh, new text field two is actually the better choice in future. Of course, it's still experimental. There could be bugs. So use it with care at the moment, but this will become the standard very soon. And if you check the first link below this video, then you will find a free PDF for you, which summarizes 20 of the most deadly mistakes you can make with Jetpack Compose. These are not only mentioned, these are explained. Um, there, there is explained how you can fix these. And there are also realistic code samples. So everything you need to have a real world checklist to also keep in mind when building your own projects. Completely free, just click the link down below and download it, and then you're ready to go. Other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.